Hello everyone, I'm uh, Ayman Shakari, uh, engineer PhD in uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence and information technologies and science. Uh, I'm a data scientist at Pentalog. I'm graduated from uh, Telecom Polytech. And I have uh, attend, attended uh, many MOOC in uh, the field of data science. Uh, the most famous are the Analytics Edge, uh, the course of uh, MIT, learning from uh, data of uh, the California Institute of Technology, and neural networks for machine learning of uh, the University of Toronto. So today I will talk about the most popular platforms for distributed uh, processing uh, uh, of big data. Uh, in order uh, to choose uh, the appropriate platform depending on, on uh, your needs. Uh, oh, so let's go. Uh, the canonical problem uh, that involved the concept of uh, big data is uh, the problematic of Google when uh, they tried to build uh, an inverted index of the entire web uh, they were forced to handle approximately about 2 billion of uh, HTML pages uh, the solution uh, that was found by Google in uh, 2002 uh, and published in uh, 2004 in a paper of uh, Jeffrey Dean who is uh, the uh, the, ch the chief engineer of uh, the distribution in Google is uh, the MapReduce algorithmic principle. Uh, Google en engineers uh, determined that if uh, work could be distributed across uh, inexpensive computers and then connected on the network in the form of a cluster, they could solve the problem. Uh, so distribution alone was not a sufficient answer. This distribution of work must be performed in parallel for the following three reasons. Uh, the first uh, reason is uh, the processing must be able uh, to expand and uh, contract automatically. Uh, furthermore, the processing must be able uh, to proceed regardless of uh, failures in the network or, or uh, the individual systems. And developers uh, leveraging this approach must be able to create services uh, that are easy to leverage by other developers. So um, this approach must be independent of where the data and uh, computations have uh, executed. Uh, MapReduce was designed as a generic programming model. Uh, some of the initial implementations uh, provided all the key requirements of parallel execution for tolerance, uh, load, balancing, and data manipulation. And um, the engineers in charge of uh, this project uh, named it MapReduce because it combines two main uh, capabilities from existing functional uh, computer languages. Uh, the first uh, function is the function map, and the second uh, function is the function reduce. Uh, so... Uh, uh, Google engineers designed MapReduce to solve a specific practical problematic. Uh, therefore, it was designed as a programming model combined with the implementation of that model. This uh, architectural change uh, has emerged a whole new field of uh, open source architectures. Uh, uh, so, MapReduce uh, in uh, system level that is related to uh, the distributed file system HDFS and which is implemented on the open source platform uh, uh, and the most mature platform called Hadoop. Uh, and above this solid foundation, we, uh, we saw an entire ecosystem developing, especially with uh, projects like Storm uh, to, to respond to issues of stream uh, processing uh, or the second generation of Hadoop with Hadoop Yarn and its core execution engine, uh, Tez, which comes out, uh, which, which comes out a bit of the, the MapReduce paradigm to avoid using the disk all the time, uh, even when we, we do not need uh, to work and uh, working in memory when it's uh, possible, and uh, go much faster uh, with the uh, lowest uh, latencies. Uh, there are also some uh, other uh, similar project to work in memory, uh, such uh, the cluster processing system Spark, uh, uh, which became the more popular uh, uh, today. Uh, so, 
So, uh, the use case of MapReduce shows two, uh, two major limitations. First, the difficulty of directly programming in MapReduce, and secondly, uh, the bottleneck performance or the batch is not suitable for use cases. Uh, MapReduce is not appropriate for large applications, therefore people have to build uh, specialized systems as solution to work around. Uh, today, uh, with the emergence of uh, the low latency analytics in different use cases, uh, Hadoop, which is very strong uh, in terms of batch processing, uh, must cope with uh, the demand of current uh, use cases such as uh, real-time data mining, uh, the, the data visualization, uh, the online learning, the online deep learning, uh, BA, low latency, the tweets, uh, the event logs, the Internet of Things. There is a lot, a lot of challenges that Hadoop must cope with. So, uh, so today, uh, we, the, uh, focusing on uh, the analytical, uh, on, on analytics productivity, time to value is uh, the K performance metric. Um, job run time is a fraction of the total time to value. There is a lot of steps before and a lot of process before delivering the final result in, in the form of dashboard, for example, or uh, an insight or, or insights. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, essentially three uh, main categories of advanced analytics. The batch analytics, like statistics, basic profiling, data preparation, where every record in a data set once. Uh, the second group is uh, the interactive analytics, where some subset of records several times. We find these characteristics in a lot of machine learning algorithms, like uh, SVM, uh, support vector machine, or random forest, or a lot, a lot, a lot, and a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms. We find a lot of iteration and also uh, in uh, the field of digital signal processing uh, uh, and the product of equalization of co or coding. And finally, the last group is uh, the interactive queries where we have to handle different subsets each time. And the streaming is a typical form of this kind of analytics. In the real world, uh, advanced analytics needs multiple uh, integrated tool set. These tool sets require very, very, very different computing demands. So I have a question. Why today we find a lot of uh, many Hadoop deployments and of deliver? Okay, can you, do you, do you have uh, any ideas about this? The, the, there is a lot of reasons uh, for uh, this issue. Uh, first, uh, data scientists are critical, but in, in, in short supply. Uh, also, we have shortage of big data tools. Uh, the complexity of m the MapReduce programming environment uh, and the cost of analytic value currently uh, it is currently too, too, too high. And also, MapReduce performance does not allow uh, the analyst to follow his his noise, his feelings, uh, and. Uh, today, a Spark is often installed on existing and their powered Hadoop clusters, leading to undesirable performance. So that's why we, we, we find this. Uh, so Hadoop, it's true that is the most uh, mature uh, platform uh, for uh, for big data. It's a great promise, but with challenges. There is a good uh, Forbes uh, article uh, named uh, How to Avoid the Hadoop Hangover. Uh, this article is uh, of Mike uh, Discroll, the CEO of uh, Meta Marcus, who said that Hadoop is hard to set up, to use, uh, and maintain. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and uh, grid computing is difficult and Hadoop doesn't make it any easier. Hadoop is still maturing from developers' standpoint. 
let alone from the standpoint of a business uh, user, because uh, only CV Silicon Valley engineers can derive value Hadoop. It's not going to make uh, inroads into larger organizations without a lot of uh, handy point and professional service. So the current uh, perception uh, of Hadoop today, uh, Hadoop uh, today is synonymous with big data and openness, capable uh, of huge scale with ad hoc infrastructure. Uh, and the current reality of Hadoop uh, it demands many experimenting, much expertise in warehousing, a little beyond that, uh, and data scientist bottleneck performs not, not yet uh, an issue. Uh, and th the current trajectory of Hadoop uh, today is uh, uh, we can find a lot of uh, trajectory, for example, industry uh, momentum, uh, universities, uh, private firms, uh, and uh, Hadoop, widely perceived I, uh, I as uh, high potential, not yet high value, but that's about to change. So, uh, this is Hadoop. Uh, now I will talk about Apache Spark. Apache Spark, which is uh, an in-memory distributed data analysis platform, primarily targeted, uh, targeted um, at speeding up batch analysis jobs, iterative machine learning jobs especially, interactive query and graph processing. So, it's distributed uh, data analytics engine, generalizing MapReduce. It also supports a rich set of uh, higher level tools, uh, including Chart SQL, for example, for SQL. And uh, uh, there, there is uh, a library for machine learning, MLlib, graphics for graph processing, and the famous Spark streaming for uh, stream processing. All these uh, tools uh, or library uh, in one unified platform, helping the development of parallel application. So the benefits of, there is a lot of benefits of uh, unified platform. First, no copying uh, or ETL, uh, ETL of uh, data between systems. Combine processing types in one program and uh, code reuse also. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's easy to, to have one system to learn, one system to maintain. So there is a lot of benefits to have a unified platform. Uh, Spark, uh, Spark uh, provides high-level uh, APIs in uh, Java, Scala, and Python, and uh, an optimized engine that supports general execution graphs. Uh, one of uh, Spark distinctions, uh, one of Spark's primary distinction, or the main concept of Spark, is the use of uh, RDD, Resilient Distributed Dataset, RDD are great for pipeline parallel operators for computation uh, and are by definition immutable, uh, which allows Spark a unique form of fault tolerance based on lineage information. So if you are interested in, for example, uh, executing a Hadoop MapReduce job much faster, Spark can be a great option, although memory requirements must be considered also. So the main goal of Spark is to work with distributed collections. Uh, as, you, as you would with the local ones, it relies on a resulted distributed data set that is immutable. Uh, it's a collection of objects spread across a cluster, uh, built through uh, parallel transformations, uh, map, filter, uh, and automatically rebuilt on failure, controllable persistence. So the caching in uh, RAM. Uh, it's a uh, fair controllable persistence for, you, for the use, it shared variables that can be used in parallel operations. Each RDD is either uh, a collection stored in an external storage system, such as a file in uh, HDFS, or uh, a derived data set created by applying operators uh, to other RDDs. For example, given an RDD of uh, visit ID and URL, pairs for visit to a website, we might compute an RDD of uh, pairs of uh, URL count by applying a map operator 
to turn each event into a URL one pair, and afterward uh, reduce to add the counts by URL. There are two ways to create RDDs, parallelizing an existing collection in your driver program or referencing a data set in an external storage system, such as a shared file system, AGFS, HBase, or any data source offering uh, uh, Hadoop input format. So Spark uh, provides three options for uh, persisting, uh, persisting RDDs. Uh, the first option is in-memory storage as the deserialized Java object is uh, the fastest uh, option. Second, in-memory storage as serialized data uh, have a limitation of space. And the, th the third option is on-disk storage. Uh, RDD, too, too large to keep uh, in memory and costly to, to recompute. Uh, I will pass to now to the performance of uh, Spark. So uh, Spark uh, enables application in Hadoop cluster uh, to run up to uh, 100 faster in memory and uh, 10 uh, faster even when running on disk. Spark makes it possible by reducing the number of read write to disk. So um, uh, it stores this intermediate processing data in memory. It uses the concept of uh, the RDD which allows uh, it to transparently store data on memory and persist it to disk only it's needed. And this help to uh, reduce most of the disk read and write. Uh, uh, as you can uh, see uh, in uh, this uh, figure, uh, the running time of logistic regression in Hadoop in Spark, uh, we can see it's about 100 uh, faster uh, so uh, it's really uh, a great performance uh, compared to Hadoop. Um, and because also logistic regression, it's an iterative uh, algorithm. Uh, also, uh, Spark is, has the most uh, active uh, open source community uh, compared to Hadoop, Storm. Uh, and also here uh, in the figures uh, in the middle, we compare the, the graphics uh, the library of uh, graph uh, uh, of Spark, uh, the runtime for end-to-end -end page rank performance, half 20 iteration and uh, supported by the edges. Uh, Spark with uh, graphics is the, the most rapid. The most. Also, uh, uh, Sparks uh, wins uh, Daytona Gray Sort uh, 100 uh, terabytes per benchmark. They use Spark and stored 100 uh, terabytes of uh, data using uh, 206 uh, uh, EC2 uh, I2 ATX large machines in uh, 23 minutes. Uh, the, pre the previous world uh, record was. Uh, I think was 72 minutes, set by a Hadoop Magnitude cluster of uh, 2,100 nodes. Uh, this means that Spark sorted the same data three, four, uh, th th three faster using uh, 10, uh, 10 fewer machines. Uh, all the sorting to, all, all of the sorting took place on the Dix HDFS without using Spark's in-memory cache. Uh, so outperforming large Hadoop map reduced clusters on sorting not only validates the vision and work done by uh, the Spark community, but also demonstrates that Spark is, uh, is uh, fulfilling its promise to serve as a faster and more scalable engine for data processing. But I, I want to put the point that this is uh, available especially uh, with iterative algorithms, with uh, machine learning uh, iterative algorithms. So here, 
it's clear that uh, increasing the number of iteration in our algorithms, the, we, we can see the, the, the utility of Spark uh, compared to Hadoop uh, in terms of uh, running time. Uh, another comparison is uh, uh, the simplicity of, uh, uh, of Spark. Here, uh, this is uh, the word count written by Spark Scala. We have uh, five code lines, and this is the word count uh, written by MapReduce. So uh, you can see here uh, it's a great difference. Five lines of Spark Scala code versus uh, 57 lines of MapReduce code. So there is a lot uh, of difference uh, in terms of uh, issue. Uh, Apache Storm. Uh, okay. Now I will pass to another platform, which is Apache Storm. Uh, is the third platform. Uh, Apache, uh, the, the third most popular platform. It's a free and open source distributed uh, real-time uh, computation system focused on stream processing, or what some call uh, complex event processing. So Storm implements of alternate methods like Spark for performing a computation or pipeline multiple uh, computations on an event as it flows in, uh, into a system. So w one might use Storm to transform a structured data as it f uh, flows into a system uh, into desired format, for example. Apache Storm makes uh, makes it easy to to probably process inbound stream of data doing for uh, for real time processing what Hadoop did for batch processing so we can say uh, storm is the Hadoop of uh, the of the, the real time processing okay. uh, so storm has many use uh, case for example real time analytics uh, it can be used to uh, online machine learning, uh, continuous computation, for example, uh, distributed uh, remote procedure call, RPC, uh, ETL, and more. So uh, it's scalable, fault tolerant, guarantees uh, that your data will be processed uh, and uh, it's easy to set up and uh, to operate. Uh, the call uh, abstraction storm is the stream. The stream is an unbounded sequence of tuple. And the storm uh, provides the primitives uh, for transforming uh, a stream uh, into a new stream in a distributed uh, and uh, reliable way. The basic primitive storm provides for performing stream transformation are spouts and bolt. A spout is um, is a source of streams that generates input tuple, uh, and a bolt consume uh, 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 any number of input streams, carries out some processing, and possibly uh, emits new streams. Uh, and a topology in Storm is a graph of stream transformations, where each node is uh, a spout or a bolt, and edges in the graph indicate which bolts are subscribing to which streams. For example, this figure uh, illustrates a topology that indexes uh, recovered uh, tweets uh, via the Twitter API uh, in Elasticsearch, uh, calculates the unique and the total number of users, and the number of tweets sent by language. And finally, the statistics uh, are stored in Redis. So every time a new tweet uh, is received, uh, it is immediately issued by uh, the spout to each of the balls have um, subscribed to its uh, outstream. And the network formed by the association of spouts and balls from a topology that will uh, then be uh, submitted to the storm cluster and performed without interruption. The cluster mode of um, store, uh, the system architecture, we use uh, numbers uh, like job tracker in Hadoop. Uh, we use a supervisor to manage workers and uh, zookeeper 
to store metadata and the user interface. So CERN cluster is superficially similar to a Hadoop cluster. Uh, whereas on Hadoop, you run MapReduce jobs. On Storm, uh, you run topologies uh, jobs and uh, topology. Uh, and the topologies themselves uh, are very different. So one key difference is that a MapReduce job eventually finishes while a topology process messes forever uh, until uh, you, you kill it. If you, do, you don't kill it, it will be... Uh, it will, it will continue to, to message. There are two kinds uh, of node uh, on a storm cluster. You can find the master node and the worker nodes. Uh, the master node runs a daemon called Nimbus uh, that is similar to Hadoop job tracker. And uh, Nimbus is responsible for distributing code around the cluster, assigning tasks to machines and monitoring uh, for fails. Uh, uh, Storm d does not natively run on the top of uh, typical Hadoop clusters. It uses Apache Zookeeper and its own master minion worker process to coordinate the uh, topologies, uh, master and uh, worker state, and the message guarantee semantics. Now, uh, what I will do, I will compare uh, the Spark stream streaming uh, which is an alternative spark to uh, real-time or stream processing to Storm because uh, we cannot compare Spark uh, to, to Storm directly because uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they, don't, they, uh, they are not in the, in the, in the same uh, use case. Uh, every platform was, uh, uh, was uh, is specialized in a kind of processing. But uh, the Spark streaming is uh, especially uh, uh, specialized in uh, stream processing. So uh, here, the, 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 the key idea behind uh, the model is to treat streaming computations as a series of uh, deterministic batch computations uh, on small time intervals. So the, the, the main concept is based on what we call uh, micro batch processing. The input data receiving during each intervals is stored reliably across uh, the cluster to form an input data set for that interval. So once the time interval completes this data set, is processed via deterministic parallel operations, such as map, reduce, and group by, to produce new data sets, uh, representation program of spools, or intermediate state. It stores these results in resilient, uh, in the famous RDD. Uh, so Apache Spark does not itself require Hadoop to operate. However, its data parallel paradigm requir requires a shared file system for optimal uh, use of uh, the of stable data. The stable uh, source can be, for example, uh, uh, S3, uh, NFS, or more typically, uh, HDFS. Storm is a good choice uh, if you need a sub-second latency, for example, and uh, no data loss. Spark streaming is better if you need a stateful computation with the guarantee that each event is processed exactly once. Spark streaming programming logic may also be easier because it's similar to batch programming. In that way, you are working with batches. Uh, one key difference between these two technologies is that Spark performs data parallel computation while Storm performs task parallel computation. And this is important to, to have this in mind because it's the, the, uh, the key difference between the two, uh, the two platforms. Uh, in this table, uh, I present uh, a benchmark uh, the difference between Storm and Spark streaming about the processing model, the latency, the fault tolerance, uh, the support languages, the batch framework integration. And uh, as we can see uh, that uh, Spark has higher throughput than Storm. 
For example, Spark Remit, 6 uh, handle safety carrier calls per second per night, while Storm has uh, 150 uh, uh, records per second per night. Uh, Uh, this is uh, another benchmark where I include uh, the famous uh, storm student, which is a high level abstraction for doing real time computation uh, on top of storm. It allows you to uh, uh, to seamlessly intermix high throughput millions of uh, messages per second, state for stream processing with low latency distributed querying. Uh, if you are familiar with high level batch processing tools like PIG or Hive or Cascading, uh, the concept of Trident will be very similar. Uh, Trident has joins, aggregation, uh, grouping, function, uh, filters, and other operations. In addition to this, Trident adds primitives for doing stateful incremental processing on top uh, of uh, any databases or any, uh, not only SQL databases or precision store. So Trident has consisted exactly once semantics, so it's easy to reason about Trident topologies. If you need uh, more details about this, you can uh, download my uh, my white paper uh, about the distributed platform where uh, I I put I put a, de uh, a detailed benchmark uh, of uh, different technologies. Uh, so uh, uh, Spark has. Uh, uh, the library is Spark SQL, which is an unified data access with, uh, uh, with the schema RGDs. Uh, for example, tables are a representation. Uh, and uh, it's uh, compatible with Hive, standard connectivity via ODBC or GDBC. And Shark is an open source Hadoop project that uses the Apache Spark uh, uh, the Apache Spark advanced the execution engine to accelerate SQL like CoS. So Chark makes use of Hive languages, its metadata, and its interfaces. So like Hive, uh, it offers a simple way to apply structure uh, to large amounts of um, unstructured data, and then perform batch SQL like query on uh, on that data. Uh, so, like Spark said in the, these figures, we can show that a chart allows for data sets uh, to be held in memory. When tables are created in Hive, users can access a sample chart API to indicate uh, to indicate uh, that the table be held in memory. Uh, so, in memory table queries are up to uh, to be 100 faster than standard Hive uh, queries. Latency for accessing on this table is still much lower, sometimes uh, 10 hundred, uh, sometimes 10, uh, 10, uh, and uh, sense queries no longer have to, to be converted to MapReduce jobs, and intermediate data is held in memory, uh, versus being written uh, to, to disk. Uh, the famous uh, machine learning uh, lib. Uh, so uh, here, uh, I address uh, um, uh, figures about the, the ease of use uh, and the performance of the different uh, famous tools for machine learning, like MATLAB, R, and the machine learning. Uh, library of Spark is uh, uh, it's the most uh, easier to use and the, uh, in the most performed. So uh, we can find a lot and a lot of uh, algorithms like SVM, uh, uh, regression, uh, even deep learning now uh, they integrate with different algorithms of deep learning neural networks. And it's really a, a great choice if we have to uh, uh, we have concept of uh, running time and uh, execution time 
and especially iterative, uh, iterative jobs. And in these uh, uh, figures, uh, there is uh, three kinds of uh, implementation of the famous algorithm k-means, uh, which is an algorithm of machine learning. So uh, the first scenario I used, uh, uh, I used here one million points and uh, five times centroids, five times graph nodes. And uh, the second scenario, which is the figure in the middle, I, I used uh, 10 million points and 5,000 uh, uh, nodes. And uh, in the last one, you see on the right, I used uh, 100 uh, million points and uh, 500 nodes. And I have uh, two... Uh, three kinds of uh, implementation. The first uh, kind is Hadoop implementations. Uh, uh, and the second kind is the high uh, parallel computation implementations, which is uh, using uh, the, uh, the MPI, uh, the message passing interface. And the third kind of implementation, which is uh, the, the kind C, like HARP, Spark, and uh, by, uh, by uh, Python uh, pilot camins, and here uh, it's uh, the enabled implementation. And as we can see, that uh, Spark, in terms of uh, execution time, is always uh, a better choice for this algorithm because I have a lot of uh, iterations. And but. Uh, uh, we can see that increasing the number of points, uh, the MPI uh, implementation uh, is more performant than Spark. So that, this is an important result because a lot of persons think that uh, uh, Spark is the most performant in terms of uh, execution time. And it's not uh, always correct because uh, here using MPI, we can attempt a lot of perform uh, high performance than Spark. And uh, to conclude, so uh, the different um, big data technologies uh, are not computers. Uh, Hadoop, Spark, Storm, uh, we, we, we don't have to... To, to compare Hadoop uh, to Spark and uh, to make uh, the two platforms competitors. It's, it, it, I, I think, um, uh, in my point of view, uh, ha Spark need Hadoop, and need especially HDFS to be uh, more stable, and it's, uh, they, are, they complete uh, Hadoop uh, to, uh, to, to, to perform uh, um, another kind of uh, big uh, data processing, uh, and uh, also uh, doing a, a benchmark uh, is is a, a great uh, doing a benchmark uh, like uh, like this um, can be useful to to choose the appropriate platform depending on the use, uh, but. Um, in this uh, survey or studies, uh, I, I focus only uh, on the analytical uh, on the analytical characteristic, and um, I don't uh, I don't uh, I, I did not uh, talk about uh, the persistent structure. So um, I think uh, it's possible to realize that uh, the Hadoop framework will stay around for a while. Uh, and for a good reason. Even uh, knowing that MapReduce cannot solve every problem, it's still a good choice for research, for experimentation, uh, and everyday data manipulation. One of the other uh, 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 um, frameworks uh, mentioned may be better if the advantages of HDFS are not necessarily imperative or if the use uh, cases are compatible with the framework capability and consequently able to take advantage uh, of its benefits.
Uh, and overall, uh, the most suitable platform must always take into account the scenario to uh, which the system is most focused. It's important to acknowledge that uh, the new Hadoop version is based on Yarn, uh, allow Spark to run on top of uh, Hadoop, and uh, there is ongoing work to to to, to achieve the same uh, to achieve the same uh, uh, with Storm. Uh, it remains to be uh, seen how successful those implementations are and also how they uh, compare to its net counterpart version of Spark and Storm. Uh, since uh, all the, the, those aspects were not approached by this, uh, these studies. Uh, uh, and based on my uh, research, the comparison must be made based on use case oriented view as the frameworks end up being more complementary than competitive uh, among uh, each other. One thing was made clear in all reference, it's, it does no matter if you choose Hadoop, Spark or Storm. Having the HDFS is really an advantage because it solves many of storage problems associated with the big data computing. So Hadoop is kind of mandatory if you need HDFS benefits. And uh, and for Spark, its best use cases are iterative machine learning algorithms, especially and uh, interactive analytics. Uh, and uh, furthermore, I think uh, Spark plus Hadoop is always better than uh, only Hadoop or only Spark, except when the work data set size exceeds the individual node RAM size. Uh, so in a way, it depends on uh, the available infrastructure or required work data, uh, data set size. So in this table, uh, I classified uh, different technologies uh, of big data, depending on the, the programming model. We, can, we find four types of uh, model, uh, the direct acyclic graph model, the MapReduce model, the graph model, and the, 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 bo the Boosk synchronous parallel collective model. And uh, the lines are class in three uh, types of uh, use, uh, for curation, for query, and for streaming. And uh, I don't have the time today to talk about all technologies, but uh, the conclusion that uh, the most popular technology are more complementary to, to be a competitor. So thank you for your uh, uh, attention. And uh, I invite you to, uh, to push your question in the, the chat to, to be able to answer it. Uh, the cluster mode of Spark is uh, similar uh, uh, to the cluster mode of uh, of, uh, of Storm, uh, we use uh, the zookeeper and uh, supervisors, and uh, we have uh, what, what we call spot context. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not important to know uh, this uh, the cluster mode of Spark, but if you, uh, you don't uh, to have uh, more details, you can find the, the answer in my uh, uh, white paper. You can download it on uh, the website portal.pentalog.fr. But it's similar to the, the cluster mode that I talk about uh, of uh, store. What are, what, uh, what are the major use cases of Spark over Hadoop? Uh, I could talk about uh, Spark's major, major use cases over Hadoop, uh, is especially iterative algorithms in machine learning, uh, interactive data mining and data processing, uh, and uh, Spark is a fully Apache Hive compatible data warehousing system that can run uh, 100 faster, uh, faster than uh, Hive. And also uh, Spark's uh, can be used uh, for stream processing, uh, like Storm also, for log processing and for fraud detection in live streams, for example, for alerts, uh, aggregates, and analysis. Uh, it, can be used, uh, it can be used also for sensor data processing, where data is fetched and uh, joined from uh, multiple sources. In memory data set really helpful, as uh, they are easy and fast to process. No, 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 
So you can uh, you can learn Apache Spark independently of Hadoop. You can install uh, Spark context, and uh, you know one of the languages uh, Scala, Java, or Python. But uh, you, you don't have to to learn Hadoop uh, first to learn Apache Spark. Thank you again for your attention, and uh, see you later uh, for another webinar. Thank you.